Ima is up next. And for those who do not know, I've had Dima on the podcast before, and he has been doing some incredible stuff, but he had where there he is. I found him now. Where where is he? Can we throw him up on here? There he is. What's up, dude? Hello. Thanks for having me. So I just gotta give you a quick intro because for those who do not know, you were heavily, heavily involved in PyTorch and the PyTorch ecosystem still are kind of. And you also were one of the creators or the creator of Onyx, which I'm pretty sure everybody at this conference has heard of. And if that is not a track record, I do not know what is. Okay. Thank you, Dimitra. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I am Dima, or full version is Dimitra, which I think is actually the same name as Dimitrius. Just Best name ever. Country. Best name yeah. ever created. I know it. Yeah, so thanks for having me, and as since was the intro, so I, I was doing a lot of PyTorch and framework stuff, and I still do, but uh, since recently, I have co-founded a company called Fireworks AI, and today I want to talk about uh, our platform and also some aspects of patterns, how we see uh, different organizations that kind of serve LLMs from and challenges they experience as they go from experimentation to production phases. So... When looking at experimentation, I think one trend which is pretty obvious is there is a lot of popularity in fine tuning like lately. And if you look at kind of how people have been using LLMs, there's this transition from just prompt engineering to fine tuning uh, for several reasons. One, it, for a lot of business tasks, it actually gives you more control over the output because you can customize the task at hand. Uh, and often, there's only that much you can do by feeding a few short examples into the prompt for existing per train model, whereas this fine tuning kind of opens up your broader breath on making the model do what you want. Surprisingly, it also helps you a lot with uh, serving costs because you can have shorter prompts, which means that your request will be served both faster and cheaper. And often you can get by by much smaller model for the same quality, where you know something like 70 billion model may be required for good prompt tuning, you might be able to generate with it good uh, training data set and fine tune like 7 billion model, which solves your more narrow expert use case much better. Another surprising reason why fine tuning is popular, especially in bigger organization, is actually how to make multiple engineers work effectively on different tasks. If you look at traditional ML, then usually there's like if you have multiple tasks, you would usually paralyze it between engineers. You would give everyone one task, they would build a model, you would deploy it in production. With foundation models, you have this trade-off. Okay, I have like one model, but many tasks. Uh, if I use it as this, it might be good. But if I want to customize um, and tune it for, diff uh, for different outcomes, how do I paralyze multiple people collaborating on it? So the interesting pattern which we see in big organization is that uh, people would start this bigger model and kind of range of different experiments through it, create different fine tunes either for particular production task deployments or maybe for some experiments they, that they want to run, uh, allowing them not to step on each other's toes and kind of uh, run actual production tests on fine tuned models in, in parallel, with periodically taking all the best discoveries and merging them back and maybe doing like a single big fine tune or combining data sets and actually like retraining some uh, the base model from scratch. This pattern is surprisingly common. I mean, I used to work at Meta before, uh, actually even earlier before like LMs and ranking recommendation systems, which power like Facebook and Instagram. And there, of the, like that was a common pattern how like hundreds of engineers would collaborate for a, on a single model, uh, while kind of fine tuning it for so many different uh, kind of use cases and spe uh, specific specializations. Uh, from what I heard from friends at OpenAI, they kind of have similar process of fine tuning for different tasks as it develops the models. And once in a while, they you know, merge back into one GPT and plus one, uh, which gets released to the world. Uh, if you're trying to do fine tuning, uh, you, you can do full fine tuning, uh, how, uh, which is often expensive and tricky to get right on small data sets. If you were following any single hybrid phase, you know that parameter efficient fine tuning is all the range where you can take your inference, you take your main model, keep it in inference mode, and learn only some parameters. And over time, people discovered so many ways of kind of doing this. One particular trick, which again is pretty is pretty popular, is called LoRa, which you probably heard of. 
uh, with the idea is that you would apply small adapter to every layer in the model and uh, tune only the small set of parameters while still using fewer GPUs to do training. And if you have a lower adapter, it allows you to also serve it more efficiently at runtime uh, for deployment. So this, the, so the pattern which we see a lot of experimentation is kind of people fine tuning a lot of adapters, often parameter efficient fine tuning. The question is how do we serve it for uh, for, for, for production for real applications without breaking the bank? If you look at some of the offerings uh, uh, on on different platforms, for example, OpenAI for fine tuning, it actually often comes with pretty high premium. For, for example, there's like 8x premium for fine tuning GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, and you might ask, why is that? Like, why, why there is such, such a big increase? That actually comes to some uh, like under, of underlying kind of implementation details of how people serve LLMs. And I think Timothy was uh, talking about some of that in his install talk earlier this morning. But fundamentally, like LLM inference, unlike training, is really the bottleneck on reading bytes from memory. And that's actually the reason why like Llama CVP running on your laptop works pretty well, because memory on laptops is not as much slower than GPUs compared with uh, compute throughput. So if you really want to use those GPUs and you want to uh, kind of have good utilization and hence low cost, you need to send a lot of requests to a single model in parallel and kind of batch them together for parallel processing. Good rule of thumb is that uh, you know, sending like 16x parallel requests on usually on models is only well, like 50% slower, so giving us like 10x uh, efficiency improvement. That sort of all works really great if you have like one big model and you're trying to send a lot of traffic to it. However, if you have this fine tuning pattern which you want to get towards and you maybe have dozens of hundreds of different model variants flying around, often being spun up or scaled down, uh, that doesn't work out, work out very well efficiency wise. All you can do is basically allocate separate GPUs, which don't really serve much traffic, but you're still paying the bill for that. Luckily, it turns out that Peft and Laura specifically can help us with that. So the one trick you can do is, uh, and which we are doing as part of our platform, is called cross-model matching. Uh, so if you try to, uh, if you have multiple model variants which were trained still on the same base model, uh, you can kind of be clever and deploy them on the same uh, on the same GPU. Uh, route all the traffic for different model variants to the same uh, to, to, to the same host, and uh, using clever implementation, allow it to run the batch of multiple requests, only which only differ in the lower adapters, thus still getting you good compute efficiency and hence uh, lower cost, while allowing you to customize models uh, pretty, pretty flexibly and kind of experiment and enable new variants. Specifically, it also means that if you have New model variant which is just fine tuned. You can just upload it to the platform, get deployed on the same hardware uh, in pretty much a matter of seconds without kind of having to go through exercise of allocating new hardware and increasing your bill. So uh, this cross cross implementation is something which we deployed. And you can like, go and try it out now by grabbing uh, grabbing the model which you fine tuned and upload it to our platform. Uh, it allows us to pass those sa uh, cost savings down to you. So specifically for uh, like we, uh, our pricing model is similar to other providers per token, uh, but it, uh, but we our price for per token for fine tuned models is the same as for the base models. So uh, thanks to these optimizations, uh, also uh, we employ best uh, best state of the art uh, inference optimizations for LLMs, uh, such as multi query uh, retention, various types of patients, disaggregating computes, and optimizing hardware. Uh, hardware set up for part for particular use case, which means that end-to-end -end cost of uh, deployed models and kind of serving them per token ends up being orders of magnitude lower than what you would end up with trying to deploy fine-tuned or even based models on various platforms where you have to pay per kind of GPU hour allocation. So, uh, uh, so with that, uh, I want to again uh, encourage you to, uh, if you're building LMs and if you're uh, using open source models, or if you are trying to fine tune, I encourage you to try out uh, Firefox AI. We have a wide selection of uh, best open source models available, which you can go and play with right away, running this uh, very fast uh, best in class inference engine. Uh, and uh, yeah. uh, and also, uh, also in terms of integration, we are open uh, open AI compatible, which means that you can use existing integrations or just 
it just changed the bad URL in even existing SDK for OpenAI. Uh, or we are good friends with Lynn Chain, so thanks Harrison for uh, for helping to integrate Fireworks there too. So uh, actually some of the play playground integrations uh, for Lynn Smith right now powered by Fireworks. And uh, of course you can use any kind of SDK or integrations you, you, you like to call the REST API for Fireworks. Uh, so with, uh, with that, I conclude this talk uh, kind of where we talked about how model fine tuning uh, really empowers experimentation phase and how some of the some of the tricks which you can do for more cost efficient and fast serving of those many fine tuned variants in inference. Uh, uh, all of those is deployed at Fireworks AI, so please uh, follow us on Twitter or try to uh, try out with, uh, some of those models. Uh, on, on our website. And well, good news is also we have free credits for developers. So feel free to try, uh, try it out as I'm paying the time. With that, uh, I want to thank you for listening. And yeah, the matter is back, back to you. Great news. You got free credits for developers. I'll tell you what, I don't say that too loud. People are definitely going to take you up on it. So we'll drop the links in the chat for all those that are interested. And Dima, it's always a pleasure talking to you, man. I love the work that you're doing. And I appreciate you coming on here and giving us this lightning talk. And I hope that we can catch up sometime very soon to have you on the podcast or something again. Like this, I'm so too. That's why. Yeah.